shovel them under and let me work. I am the grass. I cover all. Then, two years, ten years, and passengers will ask the conductor, somebody on a train going past the battlefield, what place is this? Where are we now? I am the grass, let me work. Let's begin at level one. This is a poem that speaks with some irony, we'll talk about that at level 2b, about the fact that men fight in wars, women fight in wars, lots of people die in wars, but very quickly they are forgotten. They are forgotten. The grass here, symbolic of the great cover-up. That is to say, people die, they're buried, and very quickly people have a tendency to forget the terrible destruction of war. Many have read this poem as one, of, as one of the great pacifist poems of all time. A powerful statement about how quickly people forget about the death and destruction of war. Let's work at 2A really quickly and try and get to some messages, themes here. Obviously, one of them is, as we've already mentioned, that people forget the tragedies of war so unbelievably quickly. The grass grows back after the land has been scarred by battle and bloodshed. And very quickly, it's as if the young, another, another major message, the young have a tendency to forget the sacrifices that were made before them. The number of high school juniors at Worland High School who cannot appreciate all of the death and destruction that gives them the freedoms that they enjoy uh, today. All of that death and destruction happening in the past, and they can't always appreciate it. The grass here then is speaking somewhat ironically. I am the grass, let me do my work. And grass starts to become synonymous with a lack of memory, a forgetting of a kind. Another major message, of course, is the very question of how can we continue to remember stuff that is really painful to remember? We don't want to remember it. We want to forget it. And the grass here becoming somewhat symbolic of the symbol, right, of forgetting. Let me do my work. Let me help people forget that something terrible happened, for example, at Waterloo or any of, the, any of the number of other places. I mean, Gettysburg, we talked obviously about Gettysburg, 10 Worlands dying in three days and, and how much destruction that is. And all of that is easily forgotten by a generation. Notice the years, two years, 10 years, and then passengers look at a train and where all these dead bodies were and go, what happened out here? Totally forgotten. The grass says, I do my job, and then they do their job. That is to say, we have a tendency to forget so quickly. The importance of memorials is another theme. You could argue that what Sandberg is saying here is, we cannot forget the sacrifice of all of these people. Um, and even though the grass does its job and obviously covers the destruction, we as a people must memorialize, as of course Lincoln said in his famous Gettysburg Address, we cannot consecrate, he said, this ground. It's already been consecrated by the dead that died on this ground. But we must remember, we must remember. Of course, uh, it to be the power of this poem, notice, is in how short it is and how direct it is. Notice how it kind of catches you off guard because the grass is the one doing the speaking and obviously grass cannot talk, right? And so when you read it, at first you're almost like, it's, it's almost like a, a joke. Notice the repetition as well um, through the poem uh, uh, of the word pile, right? Pile, 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 which seems to kind of objectify all of those dead where they're not even seen as really human beings. They're just kind of like bodies that just get piled on top of each other. In other words, how quickly it becomes, you know, not, uh, not, not, very, not very personal, all the dead who have died. Let's jump to 3A for a second. We've asked this uh, earlier about um, uh, a couple of other earlier readings that dealt with war and battle. What is for you your most provocative movie about war and battle? 
Of course, when Steve Spielberg years ago made Saving Private Ryan in those opening powerful scenes, he said one of the reasons he made those opening scenes was because he wanted the young to not forget the terrible destruction of the of D Day. Of course, we can think about the ways in which our video games that we often play that are violent and often are, and are kind of, you know, cast in times of war where lots and lots of killing happens. Notice how little is really appreciated in those games of the piles of the dead, right? We can play the game and we can have all of this dead bodies and the carnage, but we're not forced, it's not in our face to have to accept we're playing a game where all this bodies are going to be piled up. You know what I mean? It's not, we don't make that connection oftentimes when we play the video games, which probably does in some ways desensitize us, as many critics of these games have argued, kind of desensitizes us to the tragedy that this poem is obviously trying to solicit. What is for you your favorite uh, um, um, movie about somebody who goes off to war and then comes home and very quickly has to deal with being forgotten and all of the other dead that are forgotten? What is your favorite memorial? Another text. See, we don't think about often memorials as texts, but when was the last time that you were at some kind of a memorial, like the Vietnam Memorial, where you're looking at a text, the wall of the Vietnam War, uh, the memorial of the wall, is a text, and it's a powerful text, right? And if you've had the chance to ever be there and see that, it is compelling, and I certainly would challenge you to spend some time in our nation's capital where you get to see that kind of memorial. It's before you die, you need to have done that once in your life, just so you can say you've done it and been there at the Vietnam Memorial and all the others as well. Compelling, compelling. Finally, 3B. What is for you your relationship to this kind of an observation? How do you think about the very notion of death and war and the ways in which so quickly people do forget, have a tendency to forget. How, how do you relate to that? Do you have, for example, somebody in your own life, in your family, that maybe experienced battle and war, and, you're, and so you're, you have a certain response to that? What are your thoughts about why people forget? And what are your thoughts about why people should remember? Do you think it's that important? Are you changing at all your attitudes? Do you find that a study of American literature, for example, is kind of changing your attitudes and making you increasingly maybe more patriotic? What are your thoughts about war? Are you a pacifist? Do you believe that war is necessary at some times? And when and for what purpose? You can write on any number of these topics. Well, there you go, an introduction to the great American poet, Carl Sandburg. I hope you have a chance to read more of his poetry someday. Thank you.